Hello, sir, and welcome to Turkey, Istanbul. You. Can you introduce yourself to us first? Of course. Hi, and uh, thank you for uh, letting me be here. I'm Lorenzo Villi, and I'm the chief test pilot in uh, Baikar Piagero Space. And uh, so I'm flying this very nice airplane that you can see that it is different from the others. I'm going to first ask you about Baikar's acquisition process of Piaggio Aerospace. I know that the company has been under uh, extraordinary administration for years, and I know that the employees had an uncertain future ahead of them. But right now, the whole process has been completed. Now the company is under Baikar's ownership. What can you say about this process? How was it, and how is the situation right now in Piaggio Aerospace? Well, you said it yourself. We come out uh, of, a, um, of a period of time with some uncertainties. My, my first reaction to this acquisition was a very good feeling about the future because the company, um, the two companies are incredible on uh, their own sides. Biker is an extremely uh, safe and, uh, and wealthy company which understands also the heritage of a company like Piaggio Space, which goes back to 140 years. We know this uh, aircraft's name, but we don't know much about its capabilities and what makes it so unique from other aircraft on the market. First of all, this was designed in a way that you could use less fuel and extremize performances. Meaning that with the same fuel and with the same power of other airplanes, you go much faster and you go much higher. So, in a sense, you are greener, but also you have to understand that this is, as a turboprop, this is the fastest turboprop in the world in this category. And uh, everything has been studied in order to be perfect for the aerodynamics. I can show you, for example, if you see the attachment of the wing it's not like some other airplanes which are high or low wing they it's just in the middle in the middle it's difficult to construct it's difficult to build but at the same time it's the position which provides the least drag so more efficiency so all these details are uh, very very important and you see that putting it in the middle the two wings attached to each other and so they cross the fuselage so to do this you have to put them behind the last passenger so the uh, cabin has all the space just for the passenger and nothing uh, no space is stolen from the wings which is something very unique now with the wings down there and the engines down there first of all you get a quietness inside which is really incredible it's much quieter than many jets but at the same time putting the wings so far back you have the necessity of having a forward wing over here you have seen it before this forward wing and this gives you the possibility of uh, having what is called the three lifting services principle normally on any airplane if you go straight and level you need to push with the tail back. This is in order to keep the nose up. If you push back on the, uh, on the tail, it's like carrying an extra weight that you do not need. Instead, with this, we have a forward wing which keeps the nose up. And in this case, we have all three surfaces, the forward wing, the main wing, and the tail that produce positive lift. So the efficiency is the maximum that you can have. I know that you have called the uh, aircraft the fastest turboprop aircraft on the market. Yes. And they call this actually, you know, Ferrari of the skies. Would you agree with this, you know, branding? I like the branding Ferrari of the sky, especially at the beginning because, you know, you have the good feeling while piloting it and you have the impression that the power arrives so fast. So it's very, very nice for handling and stuff. But I would rather go instead of talking about Ferrari, I would rather talk about some electrical 
cars that are right now because this one is almost as quiet and burns very little fuel compared to a Ferrari. How high can this aircraft can go? Well, this airplane can go to 41,000 feet, which is not really an altitude difficult to reach. Actually, you can cruise at that altitude and the fuel consumption over, the, over there, it's really, really low. It's ridiculously low for many pilots. They don't believe when they see it. How is it like to pilot such an aircraft like this? I, I mean, does it have any feature that is unique to this aircraft? The flying controls are very well harmonized and it behaves like any other airplane uh, in terms of maneuvering. But it has a wonderful feature for something that you don't always talk to passengers about, but to pilots it's important. It's about stall, the stalling. Normally when you stall with any other airplane, when you arrive to the angle of attack of stall, so meaning you're going slow and slow and slow, you have a wing drop, a sudden wing drop, and you lose control completely. With this airplane, it's this one is designed in such a way that only the forward wing will stall and so the main wing in the back will have um, always some lift and you will not have a wing drop so you will remain in control even at the speed below the stall and this is very very important because it makes you predictable you don't have surprises and to me is the safest that you can find as far as i know this is the evo version so it has some new features from the you know the first and the second versions like the landing gear as far as i know well, can you talk about these features well you know you have a new landing gear but it resembles exactly like the old one you have a new steering which now it's digital safety class a so you can keep it always on for takeoff and landing you have torque control automatic so the pilot doesn't need to worry about it but most of all you have different uh, propellers you have less noise also on the outside because inside it's already quiet but also on the the outside you have less noise and you have also better systems inside like for temperature control and all stuff it's even more comfortable inside but if we go inside I will talk to you about something else yeah, yeah let's go inside let's jump inside so now we're inside the aircraft what can you tell us about the interior of this aircraft well, first of all, about the look of the interior, you can choose any look you want. So, uh, what you see is not what you will get. If you want something different, you can get something different. What I like about it is the room that you have. Because for such a, an external dimension, for uh, this category of aircraft, you have the biggest cabin inside. And, and you can check, if you go to a, even a jet, of the same length of fuselage you will have your ear very close to the wall and you will have the even the jet engine will be very close to your ear to your ears and the the noise will be loud instead here in flight you can talk to each other and uh, i must wear a different helmet in the front in the cockpit because otherwise i hear everything you say so it's very quiet we talked about the noise mm -hmm. and then for the comfort there are two different things that uh, contribute to the comfort of the passengers. One is the vibrations. And uh, you must know that this airplane, with this wing configuration that it has, it's much less sensitive to turbulence. So whenever, whenever we pass in a zone of turbulence, what the passenger will hear, will, will feel, is much less than what they will feel on another airplane because Turbulence can be thought like, um, you know, a vertical component of the wind which changes. If you have a big wing, a big surface of the wing, you will have more sensitive to that. And so the airplane will move. Whereas with this one, you can check that the wings are very small. And so it goes faster and it is less sensitive to turbulence. And the third thing that uh, helps in reducing the fatigue of the passengers is the altitude inside the cabin. So this airplane is pressurized, like most of these categories, but the pressurization of this one is particularly good. You can keep the sea level inside the cabin at the very high altitude. We're talking about 25,000 feet. This means that if you take this airplane in an ambulance version, for example, you can have a patient going like if he was going not in the air, but in a car because the altitude will be the same. And uh, when you go at 41,000 feet, the cabin is 
lower, the altitude is lower than what you get in an airliner, much lower, so much less fatigue than in an airliner. You talked about, you know, the configurations of this aircraft. What can you tell us about the other configurations of this aircraft? Externally, it's going to be the same. You will not see many differences, but internally, you know, this airplane has been used also by many, I mean, in Italy is used by the Air Forces, by the Air Force, by the Navy, by the Army, by the firefighters, by, you name it, you get the police, you get customs control, everybody uses it because it's easy to work inside. If you have an opera, like for example, we have also the calibration for the airports. There is the Italian department for it that uses the Piaggios because inside working, the working environment is really nice. So you can stay hours inside and uh, work without fatigue. And on the same, uh, on the other side, you have also that the airplane is very stable. So whenever do all the approaches that they have to do for the calibration, the airplane goes steady and the results are always perfect. In the military versions, you can have both with the high density version for taking troops with, uh, with their equipment, or you can have training as a big part. Training is a very big part because with this airplane, you can train the multi-engine environment. The cost for the training mission is going to be low because it's a turboprop but the pilots can think fast like they would think on the airplane when they go to the squadrons because the airplane is very fast. Can we think of this aircraft, you know, it's a turboprop but it's like a jet, can we say that? Of course you can say and uh, to tell you this, not only it is like a jet for the speed and the behavior but also every other turboprop has the turboprop to, uh, the the two engines with the propellers turning on the same side this gives you an asymmetry and this gives you also in case you lose an engine it's what you call a critical engine because one will make the airplane go more asymmetrical to the other side this one has the two propellers turning on the opposite and so you don't even have to coordinate the turns, you don't have to trim for speed changing, so you behave like if you were a jet pilot. So you must have flown with this aircraft for thousands of hours, I presume. What can you tell us about your personal experience with the aircraft? How would you describe it? Well, I can tell you this. When I quit the Air Force, I was flying all the fighters and all the transport aircraft that we have in the Air Force. I would have been facing a period of time in which I would have flown just this airplane. I took it easily. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's many years that I'm flying this airplane as chief test pilot. And I can tell you, I'm not bored at all. I love the job and I love the airplanes, especially. So what can you tell us about the safety? of this aircraft. How safe is this? I, I, you know, you talked about the engine failures, but is there anything other than unique? You know, is there anything else? You see, this is certified as a civilian uh, transportation airplane for uh, passengers, so it has the highest level of certification. But the uh, what you were saying, like a stall, meaning that it didn't seem a lot, but it is a lot, because to me, it installed a sense of safety which is really unique. I know that even if I go low speed and I maneuver quite fast, if I see the airport in a position where I don't expect it, maybe I'm low and slow, if I, if I turn quickly and turn towards the airport with any other airplane, it would flip around me and crash, which sometimes it happened, you can see. With this one, it will not happen and this is something that gives me very very free spirit whenever I see bad weather I see bad weather I see turbulence I see strong winds and I feel much safer in this than in any other one uh, do you have any message for the future well for the future I hope that about this airplane you cannot ameliorate too much the aerodynamics because it has been studied better than a fighter you know usually you take 700 hours in the wind tunnel testing at maximum for any civilian airplanes with this one we took more than 4000 hours in the wind tunnel testing to extremize and tune every little bit of performances so the drag is really reduced but we can still improve some systems inside there's always a way to improve and so for me for the future i hope that there will be some small improvements we don't need a lot but some small improvement are welcome to come